Hey everybody and welcome to a liberating, freeing wild ride with Steve-O. Oh man, we're talking about getting freed from prison and free of shame and all kinds of other stuff. Plus, we're talking to the richest painter on the planet. That's right. This guy painted the murals in the Facebook offices and they figured they'd just pay him in stock. So he's now literally the richest painter on earth. And he's a great guy and we had an excellent time. But before we get started with that, I want to tell you how I start every single day. I literally meditate and then I want to drink my coffee. But first, I know I got to hydrate and I want to do it in the most healthy way. So I got athletic greens. I put a scoop of this in my water and that's got 75 different vitamins, all sourced from completely whole foods, natural. It's like literally got probiotics, like every little healthy thing. And unlike uh, multivitamins, not harsh on your stomach, man. Dump it in your water, pound it down. It's absolutely delicious. Helps you stay focused. It, it, it improves your gut health and your digestion. And uh, man, I, I just don't eat enough greens. So I'm telling you, my AG1 from Athletic Greens, it's what I am talking about. So that's how I start every single day. I think you should too. And if you go to athleticgreens.com slash Steve-O, not only can you get all this great stuff, but with your first purchase, you get five of these free travel packs, which I don't go on tour without because I literally do this every morning. And that makes it so easy. You also get a year's supply of vitamin D from them. So dude, you can't do better. I use this every single morning. You should too. One more time, go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo to get five free travel packs, your supply of vitamin D, and you get all that with your first purchase. So get to it and let's get into it. And uh, we're ready to go. Are we all going barefooted? Um, is this okay? Please. Yeah, yeah, I I just, I, he's barefooted, I'm, and I'm now. This is the first barefooted podcast. We're our toes here, yeah. See, I'm always barefoot, and people complain about it like crazy. Yeah, they just can't see my feet. He goes barefooted into the plane in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my okay. God. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Cho. Yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah, dude, to you, bro. <laughs> so you just met Scott Randolph. That's right. Paul Brisky. What's up, guys? What's up, Dave? We are uh, parked in give, the RV give in me the address. a very <laughs> fancy neighborhood. This is not the house that you grew up in. I, no, absolutely not. Um, first question is, has anyone dropped a deuce in there? We dirt? went for a very long time with the strict no pooping rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I just had to poop too bad and I, and I broke down and did it, but I've only pooped in there once. Did you put a plastic bag in it before? Oh, I, I, I guess I had done that before. I had done. I guess that I should ask: Has a guest ever pooped in there? Oh, a podcast guest has you not. Why do you have to poop? Not, not right now. But it's. It depends what we talk about. It could happen. You know? <laughs> I, uh, Get nervous. Oh my God! If if we hit some certain subjects, it will. You yeah, know, just flood. My house is right there. So. I, I like the idea. Of, uh, <laughs> of, of we could keep rolling. You yeah, can we'll talk keep to me I'll with the door open. Mic. You can take it in there with yeah, you. We yeah, we can switch mics. Keep chatting. You know, pull that thing right up on you too, David. Yeah, All right. Right. Well, there's certain subjects that make you nervous. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the more interesting question is when you feel nervous, mm. you, that makes you poop. Yeah, I've had, um, I've always, um, you know, Koreans can't, for the most part, uh, you know, Asians in general don't, didn't grow up with cheese, right? Okay. Dairy. So, you know, rice and, you know, kimchi and all this other stuff, but it's only until. Uh, you know, Asians started coming to America, like, this is my understanding of it, that the first time, you know, so I think about my dad, my grandpa, my great grandpa, every, my generations of people that have never tasted sour cream, uh -huh. cheese pizza, you know, like any of that shit. And then, so I'm the first guy, right. I'm the first guy out of thousands of generations to ever, of course my shit's going to like, you know, I wake up, I got to take three to seven shits a day. I go ah. see the doctor. He's like, "Don't drink, you know, dairy. Don't eat cheese. All that stuff." So I just go. I'm, 
I'm, you know, it's a lactose intolerance. So, well. so, yeah, my girl is lactose intolerant. But is that the full story? Because, you know, I'm like, is that, is that normal for like someone to go to the bathroom like seven times? If you ask my mom, she's like, oh yeah, it's very healthy. It has a very healthy digestive that system. seven sounds like a lot. It's, I it think sounds like a lot. But are they like healthy shits or is it like diarrhea? No, nah, it's not healthy, bro. <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> it's, it's I, more. And, uh, so I sit there and I, and I, uh, you know, I do the Wikipedia thing or, um, with Web WebMD MD. and I go, Web what's, <laughs> what's, um, IBS, like how, what's caused irritable bowel syndrome, what causes those things and they don't have an answer. And so I start reading books about it and it's like most tr like chronic pain is trauma, like some kind of traumatic thing or like yeah. stress induced. And so I think about my life today, which is like very, very low stress. And then this is this is a I'm, I'm grateful that I can say this. It's a blessing I can say this. The number one stress in my life is I have to do a podcast once in a while. Yeah. Hmm. And then when that happens, I notice I have to take a lot of more shit. Oh really? Wow. Like if I like I did Rich Roll like a month yeah, ago. Yeah, I saw that. Rich Roll's a good buddy of mine. He's fucking awesome. I love that. But dude. like I don't do like I used to do a podcast every day and like it was fine. And I also shit like seven times a day. But yeah, at, at my worst, when I was like being competitive with like video games and gambling and how many women I could sleep with and all these things, it was just part of my curriculum. I would just wake up, shit, shit, like just everything is punctuated with uh, bowel movement. And now I had two very healthy, healthy bowel movements a day. That's good. And um, I tried to do three. You try to shit three times a day? Yeah. I heard, you, sh I heard you should never push. Never. Yeah, yeah, you don't, yeah. don't want to push. Just, it should yeah. just, you know. But yeah. you, you never get nervous and have to shit like scoring coke back in the day. Like you're excited and you're like, driving mean, there and you're farting and you got to shit. I mean, the, the, the first like bump of coke, the first line would make me shit. Mm. Like coke has a very laxative quality, but that had nothing to do with nerves. It had to do with the actual drug. I, I, I look at like... What, what, Is that true? Because I heard... Oh, uh, yeah. I heard, um, I, you know, I'm not a drug addict, but I've talked to many drug addicts and I knew a few guys in rehab that were cokeheads and they were like, we'd start to feel like we need to shit before we did the coke. Yeah. I wouldn't just, just when we heard that, yeah. like the, the dealers coming mm. and like the ritualization of the, the right. whole act of start the farting, where am I going to get the money? And it's like, just that part would get like, Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. And then, and, um, yeah, so I'm just wondering if it's the actual coke or the... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a psychosomatic piece to it, but from my recollection, it was the immediate effect of the, of the actual drug. Mm. But let, let me just say that you're, uh, you know, th this is the most stressful thing in your life. Yeah. Like, what, what an honor, man. Thank you yeah. for doing this. <laughs> It's no, sad. man. Sorry for stressing you yeah, out. Sorry to put yeah. you through it. No, man. I love it. I love talking to fellow Koreans. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard this, but Steve-O is a very typical Korean name. Oh, how about that? Wow. <laughs> like, I, I, oh, like, Koreans have, like, five last names. Lee, right. Kim, Cho, you know, um, and O, like, O-H. So... Steve-O, he's part of the tribe. Is Steve yeah, a Korean man. name? Oh, yeah. If, if, if Stevie Weeby. Stevie Weeby, for sure, yeah. When, you get, when uh, the Koreans come over here, they're like, what's, like... Bob, Joe, Jim, Steve, Eddie, and then, you know, throw a tag on a... So, I think, you know, Americans being being pretty ignorant, like, uh, is, do you find, like, the, the, the difference between South Korea and North Korea, like, I guess people probably pretty much grasp it, right? That North Korea is, like, the crazy part. Where... This, this is the way I look at it, because my, my family's from South Korea, and if you, if anyone's listening to this and they're like oh i have a korean friend they're probably from the south there's very right. few <laughs> like yeah. like probably you gotta do some you. like like insane shit to get out of north korea so um most most koreans are from the south and when people make that distinction it's like it's an imaginary line right when someone's like and you could say say this about any country but they're like oh are you north korean or south korean and i and i look at at the world today and it's fucking insane what happens in North Korea. Like yeah. it's yeah. insane what happens over there. And most people don't really talk about it or know, know about it because of the secrecy. And I know there's more stuff getting out, but um, like when people fuck with me and I'm, I'm in a, like I said, I'm in a very great place in my life. I'm the happiest I've ever been, but I've always been like, you sure you want to do that, dude? 
Like it's like right now it's 2021. And my people, when I say my people, I'm just saying Korea period, North and South, still think communism is okay. (laughs) Like it's one of the final, final true communist countries in the world. That shows if you look at countries as people, our level of stubbornness, right? The whole world has like done all this and that. And like, now we're, even though all of our people are dying, even though all like, so that DNA I think is like imprinted like somewhere in here because I've done so many, uh, and I've talked to you a lot about this. I've done so many self-destructive, does not make sense behaviors where people go, wait, but if you just did this or that, your life would be easier. And I'm like, I just, and you know, I'm better about it now, but yeah, basically I'm North Korean. I wonder, (laughs) I wonder if communism is really that bad. Right, I mean, as a philosophy, communism, everything's communal, we share, right? It's, it's fucking it's, dope if it were, it, if everyone, right. if greed it, didn't exist. As, yeah. as, as a theory, sure. communism's yeah. great. Right. You know, it's just in practice, corruption will screw up any form of government, no matter what it is. And I think that when you're, the way that you said that, they still think communism is okay. I almost think what you're speaking about is dictatorship, right? Like, because dictatorship and communism are... I'm I'm talking more just about like the level of stubbornness when there's like the reality of people starving in front of you and right. dying and you're and they're just like does not impute and I'm just gonna keep you know right and 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 actually the concept of communism I I would guess the closest and I've talked about this extensively but it is is prison right like everyone just get or at least the prisoners right it's right. supposed to be equal mm-hmm. everyone yeah. there's no special treatment. And when I was in jail in Japan. Japan is one place I have never been to jail. I have been to jail in California, Florida, Louisiana, London, England, Stockholm, Sweden. But hey, life is a lot better when you're not in jail at all. And life is also a lot better when you're hydrated, man. And I'll tell you, for all the people out there drinking soda, it's awful for them. You know what's good? Drinking water, man, and a nice, cold, sparkling, liquid death from the Austrian Alps. That's what I'm talking about. Getting hydrated with a nice, crispy, liquid death, man. They also have mountain still water. And all of it comes in infinitely recyclable cans that look dope as hell. Like, it just looks dope as hell. And if little kids drink them in school, their teachers think they're drinking a beer. And I'll tell you, the CEO of Liquid Death loves that. This is just a company that is hilarious and cares about the world, man. Like, they do, they donate 10% of all the profits to uh, taking on the plastic industry. Death to the plastic industry, that's what they're talking about. They care about the world and they make my life better. I'm a healthier guy because of them. And you're going to be a healthier person because of them too. By going to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo, you get free shipping on any order of merch or water. And dude, that's crazy on their part, man. Shipping costs a lot, especially heavy water. And they're going to give you free shipping. Jump on this, man. Go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. You get free shipping on all your merch and water orders, drinking cool-ass, infinitely recyclable cans, and being a healthier person because you're hydrated. Hurry up right now. Go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. Start ordering. Now let's talk about prison in Japan. Everyone gets one cigarette. For Everyone gets the same meal until they figure out, oh, this guy... If you're in jail and you have any skill to alleviate the boredom, right? If you can sing, dance, draw, like anything, like tell jokes, then you're an instant celebrity. Hmm. So once they decided, once they realized, oh, holy shit, this guy can draw. He can like draw cards for us, for our girlfriends, for our wives. I was like the celebrity. And then I started getting extra shit. You know, people were passing me extra like, you know, rice and like snacks and shit. And then instantly when that happens, it's no longer communism, right? right? And then it creates jealousy and and like backstabbing and like fuck that dude and all that so debts and gambling right so in theory if everyone could just share and everyone's like equal like fucking great you know like it's just 
you know. It works in Topanga, not in different countries, you know. <laughs> uh, how, how long were you in jail in, China, in Japan? I was in jail for three months uh, serving a seven-year sentence. So they let me out early. Do they wow. serve you sushi in jail? I wish. <laughs> I wish, bro. Uh, they served, uh, like the most disgust you know i love it now because that's how trauma works <laughs> like yeah. uh this thing in uh breakfast called natto which is fermented it's like smells like kimchi uh, it no it's <laughs> you throw it out all the curry shit uh it smells like beans that someone nutted on right and it's like it's just it's just it's a foul i thought it was torture i was like it smells like liquid shrimp yeah <laughs> i'm like you guys are giving me like rotten beans for and i was like this is like let me talk to someone from the u.s embassy this is like harassment and they're like oh no this is like we all eat this shit and <laughs> love uh, this shit. yeah what year were you in uh jail in that Japan? was 20 years ago 20 years and that's the last time i got got in trouble and that was the last time um, I was in shape. <laughs> okay. You just did push-ups all day. And I did uh, one thousand push-ups a day. Wow. One thousand. I I would and people are like, no, you didn't. And I go, well, yeah, I didn't start doing it. Month one, I would do like I could barely do twenty, and then I was like, holy shit. And then um, for people who were like, that's impossible or that's bullshit, wake up tomorrow at six is which when you have to wake up in prison, and then have that be the only thing you day you do that day till eight o'clock at night. Yeah. It's like yeah. you could do 10, take a break, do 10, have lunch, clean your room, do 20, do 30. If you have the entire day and that was the focus of my day. So when I got out, I was I was pretty ripped. I was like that was the most I was 27, 20, yeah, 27 years old. And then um So I, wow, so where where are we the same age? I'm 47. I'm 45. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha, so okay. pretty close. And then I go on that fucker Rich Rolls podcast and you know, part of the anxiety is like like, like, um, there's different Stevos, right? Like right. there's like addict Stevo, c crazy out of control. And then for right. me, the best, you, right now you're the best version of Stevo. I've, and I, and I love you and I love hanging out with you. Well, thanks man. I'd likewise. So when I, when I, and that's kind of where I'm at today too. And I think that's why we vibe is, is like, I notice people who want, Oh, go back to that jail the the guy that would do anything like and I go I could tell you a story about that but that's not who I am today right and and my codependence wants to please you so it goes okay let me you know but so I I, I, I start to notice that those people don't call me as much anymore right because they're like oh you're gonna talk to me about some therapy or some bullshit right. <laughs> and in the same way the the talking about shitting and whatever the the nervousness that comes up when I go talk to a guy like Rich Roll is like that guy used to be fat, out of shape. He used to be a, an addict, and now he's like running 500 miles in three days. Or yeah. you know, I'm like, I, I, I'm gonna naturally, the kind of person I am, feel shame, just hanging out with him, even though, even wow. if, even if he's not saying to do anything, because I'm like, wow, he did it. He got his shit together. Like, what the fuck's wrong with me? And um, so I did a show, and he gave me his book and everything, and we talked about recovery, and I, and I lost. Um, about 15 pounds just from like shitting just <laughs> just, from yeah. Shitting. Yeah. Doing just from doing his podcast yeah, yeah just like thinking about it <laughs> and then um and then i um i i lost you know my friend um he like cooks for jeff bezos once in a while right wow. he's like a celebrity chef guy and he's mean he's mean to me so he goes uh hey man every time i cook for bezos he looks like he's getting younger and more healthful and doing all this anti-aging shit and he's like you're a fucking rich dude like you look like shit fatter and uglier every time i see you so he kind of shamed me and i and i was like what that is true like why why aren't i taking care if i if i truly am the happiest i've ever been why aren't i taking care of myself better because when i wasn't taking care of myself i didn't give a shit if i lived or i died so i go you know i go to the fancy hollywood beverly hills doctors that are seeing you know and I go, yo, bro, I'm fucking rich. Like, I want to live forever. Like, what do you got for me? <laughs> and they're like, there's all the stem cell shit. There's this, there's that. And I'm like, all of it. I, I want, you know, total addict behavior. I'm like, give me everything that's, that's going to make me live. Biohacking. And they're like, some of this shit, you got to go to Korea. Some of it, you got to go to Germany. Some wow. of you got to go to Costa Rica. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. This I did stem cells in Colombia. Oh, okay. You got to tell me about that shit. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> recently or a while Yeah, ago? like very recently. It and was, um, it's a company called Bio Accelerator. 
I believe it's an American company, but they operate out of Colombia because the, it's illegal in America to perform the procedures that they perform there. Right. And it's speculated that it's illegal in America because the procedures they're doing with stem cells there pose a threat to the, um, what do you call it, uh, phar pharma... Mm. Like the big pharma yeah. and like and and whatever like there's more money in operating on people right and of course prescribing them yeah. drugs than actually like getting to the root cause. Wait, so how recent was that trip? Uh, shit, when when was it? I just got a couple just, months ago or a, a month ago? Months. A couple months, I think. You get that shit too? No, dude. Why no, do I look just, young as fuck or what? <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I was it a group so trip or yeah, yeah I want to go. go. It was just, it was just trip. me. It was so like, they, like candidly, they uh, did it all for free for me if, if I posted about it. And, oh, nice. And it, it worked out great because the the posting that I did about it was like super well received. You mm. know, like uh, that everything performed really well. What I noticed though was that when I was posting about being there, it was just a, a deluge of like just people crying out desperate for help with like chronic pain like mm. i have this like you know my spine like i'm at pain i'm in pain like i need so many people i was overwhelmed with uh just desperate cries for help and i and i it just it, it messed me up so i talked the ceo of the company into doing a lottery to give away like, oh like fuck royal yeah. treatment to three different winners nice dude. are they still doing the lottery they, they've i believe picked one so far and so they're just still, still yeah wait so and initially they uh they weren't they said that the the treatment would be free but you have to get yourself there and i and i, I piped up and said come on dude what the fuck is that you know yeah dude. Let me, <laughs> i said i've got so many uh frequent flyer miles accumulated oh let, let me cover it and travel for like two of the winners you know yeah, and yeah. Like, and they said, "Cool, we'll cover the third. So, so nice. now travel's all. Included. The third one has to hitchhike. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, the third one's like you got not a walk there. But but, the, but it's tough. Suspense is killing me, bro. Did it I, work? <laughs> exactly. It's tough for me to to say because what I was there for was uh, degenerative disc disease in my neck. Mm. I can tell my neck's fucked up, yeah. but I'm not in a like debilitated state and I'm not in chronic pain. Mm. So uh, the idea of getting stem cell treatment there was was largely preemptive. Mm. So I can't, it's not like I have pain that can go away. So it was to specific say, to your to chronic pain, right? Yeah, they do, do, they do it different ways. They, they injected it directly into my neck, mm -hmm. into my cervical spine. And uh, they 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 injected a, like fuck tons of stem cells into my spinal cavity. The idea being that it goes mm. up my you know into my brain stem and helps with concussions. Right. And they also uh, flushed a fuck ton through an IV, so it just circulates through your whole body and, and hones in on mm. things that need help. Uh, oh, and they injected a fuck ton of them into my face too, which uh, apparently will you look amazing know, make me look younger. Well, thanks, dude. And fuck that guy. I think you look great. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I also I've been work, working out, you know. Yeah. Um, and I also think that stress is more dangerous. Oh yeah. I think that like like what like and trust me, I understand what right. it's like to be caught in this like cycle of telling yourself awful things mm. about yourself. And, right. You know, all the negative self-thinking and negative, like, like self-loathing. That's all more dangerous than, like, most any lifestyle habit, right. I would say. Well, look, I, 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 I try my best every day to eliminate as much stress as I can. And, you know, there's people, like you said, there's crying out there in so much right. pain. And, you know, real pain, like bone stuff, like sure. actual. But there's also a lot of people out there, you know, in rehab, my, 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 um, my roommate was one of like the best spine surgeons in America. Wow. And he's like, he's like, I'm, you know, I'm going to big up myself. Of course I'm the best and it works. I do it. I, people come in, they cry, they uh -huh. go, you changed my life. He goes in 100% of the cases, the pain comes back somewhere else. Mm. It comes back in, you know, huh. so, somewhere else. Like you fix and, my spine. And, and why is that? Is that like a well, this is depends on, you know, like I try to keep this kind of stuff to myself, but I'm here. So I'll just talk about it is, um, like, it's like, how open are you to, um, like, there's actually a lot of doctors in rehab, so I get right. to, I get mm -hmm. to talk to them. Like, oh, dude. Uh, 
we 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 had the, the oh, I, I was on your uh, just the show with the, the your FX show and, and shout out to it because I got so much great feedback. Oh, from thanks, it. man. Like, yeah, I love, loved it. I thanks, loved man. it. It was so I appreciate cool. it. Show show on on FX. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then fucking dial it up because it's epic. Thanks, but man. When I was when I did my episode with you, I was getting ready to ride a bicycle while having a yeah, general, yeah. general anesthesia drug administered yeah. to me. And when Scott and I were were figuring out how to make that happen, we spoke to a bunch of anesthesiologists, mm -hmm. and they said. Stay the fuck away from propofol, the Michael Jackson drug. Oh yeah. They said that that uh, there's just a straight epidemic of medical professionals rampantly abusing it. Like oh. anybody who can get their hands on the Michael Jackson Dude. shit is shooting themselves up. Oh with yeah. It. So I've met those guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you know, so these are got people that are medical professionals who abuse the shit out of painkillers and propofol and you know all these things. Oh, ketamine's a big one too, man. Like uh, with all the veterinarians are fucked up on ketamine. Right, and <laughs> if you talk to any one of them, they'll tell you. These, you know, they're like, it doesn't cure the problem. Like it just numbs the pain. It yeah. just redirects pain, and you're like literally exactly the same. Your whole body. So you're not treating the the cause of it. You know. So a lot of, um, and this is the part where I lose a lot of people. There's, uh, you know, when you watch, um, like, uh, like a lion almost kill like a deer in the wild, right? Like it's like this close, right? It like almost kills them. And then the deer survives and like three seconds later, he's like at the pond, like chilling with his friends, like nothing happened. So that's every animal. Every animal almost survives, dies every day and they just go on with life and they don't like, they don't become drug addicts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Humans and dogs are the only animals that some fucked up shit happens to us. Like, like it happens to everybody. And then we carry it for the rest of Store our lives. Store it in your brain. Yeah. So really? there's exercise. elephants? Uh, <laughs> they say they don't forget. They never forget. And, and uh, you gotta break their spirit to train them. And I think he fucked them up. Like, but then again, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is just what people tell me. So I've done all these like trauma release ex exercises yeah. that like, and you know, like old pain from like 20 years ago coming out. And so, um, you know, after talking to these pain doctors and spine surgeons and whatever, because I have like. The shitting thing, the IBS, going back to the shitting once again, and all these like chronic issues. Um, you know, I started hearing about um, Dr. John Sarno. He, he wrote this book, Healing Back Pain. Howard Stern talks about him a lot. He passed away, but that book. Oh, I remembered Howard Stern talking about John Sarno. Yeah, so it's about, you know, and I'm nowhere near the person that, you know, I just started doing it. So, but I started like talking to the pain, you know, because like, when I, I realized some shit was happening in my body, the IBS, like, it's, okay, let's just stick to the IBS because that's what I have. It's like, fuck, there's the van. Shit, this is happening. Mm -hmm. There's the wild ride sign. I'm about to, you know, it's like, fuck, I hope I'm interesting. You know, all these, this, you know, and then that manifests with, you got to take a shit. Because sure. if I got to take a shit, then I can hide in that room and I don't have to, yeah. you know? So is what's going on there it's like social anxiety the fear and then what's that what does that link back to so um i threw my back out a few months ago and i, I was just like this is like some old man shit i'm 45 i'm a middle-aged man like you know i'm like i got access to all this medical care i'm like i'm gonna have to get surgery and i'm doing all this stuff so i started reading this guy's book and you know i'm like you know I, i'll be honest i didn't finish reading it because i'm like just <laughs> yeah, that's how sure. i read back and forth and uh so i'm reading different chapters i'm i'm you know taking what i want leaving out some shit and um i started talking to the pain i was like what's going on like how come you you know my you know people who know me are coming into my room going like are, are you talking to someone right now like you're losing your mind and i'm literally talking to the pain like hey it's like it's cool man you don't have to do this to me like you don't have mm -hmm. to and i swear to god i know i'm gonna sound like a quack the pain left me in like less than a day like mm -hmm. it just like i could walk i couldn't even it was like that pinched kind of feeling where every time i walk my legs felt you know and i was like fuck man i must have moved wrong or picked up a box wrong or something and it just left me and i've been applying that because if you believe like painkillers work right you take a pill and it redirects so you don't feel the pain so if a pill could do that there is a way if you do a lot of meditation and mental stuff like you could do that just without the pill mm -hmm. right it's a lot more work so um so that's where i 
Well, I think one of the hardest things for you and me both uh, to say is no, right? So I'm at the place. I'm like, I got the money. All these Jeff Bezos dudes are doing this shit. Steve-O did it, right? Like, I'm like, give me all that stem cell shit. Give it, like, put it in my dick, put it in my asshole. Like, but I put it places where they, I don't need do, it. They do put it in the dick. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, if I, I, I don't if know, I'm I going to Columbia, put it, definitely put it in my dick, you know? And so I sat there, and I'm, like, filling out the paperwork, and he's telling me to go to the, you know, and I go, uh, it feels very addicty. Right. It feels like I don't feel good instead of proper nutrition and exercise. Why don't I just like inject right. like mm -hmm. I, was, I even asked him, I was like, the profanol shit like just knocks you out. Right. Like the propofol. Uh, propofol. Yeah. I go, I go, hey, bro, is there a way? <laughs> He's like, are you really this lazy? I go, can you just knock me out? and then hook me up to a machine that works me out like while I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and like when I wake up, it's like, bro, I got abs. And right. like, I'm like, that's gotta exist, Just right? And he months. goes, it, it probably can exist if you, you know, if you have enough money, you can pay for anything. But it probably, you'll probably end up the way Michael Jackson did, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I wake up and I'm like, oh shit, I ran 500 miles, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So I said no, and I walked out and I kind of went to like victim sad guy mode. I was like, you know what? just age the way you age you're a fat 45 year old you're just you're, you're living that dad life that's who you are just accept it you you live in like the future where they have grubhub and postmates and like it's just it's awesome just like read comic books at two in the morning and like just have a cheeseburger like well you said that the only time you were really in shape was 20 years ago so presumably it's not like an age thing right you've been this way for what so you've like had almost shame 20 for years? 20 years I, well i mean part of it is money right like resources like I, I i've been like a skinny asian kid my whole life until i realized my first paycheck where i was like i can get a steak and the app and the dessert and a drink <laughs> you know because i didn't grow up like that it was just like yeah. We didn't. First of all, we didn't go out, and if you did, you're not getting. Are you? Know. you is there like? Is it official? You are the wealthiest painter alive. I've heard it said that a good interviewer will only ask questions to which they already know the answer. And yeah, he's the richest painter in the world. But we're about to find out how he reacts to being asked that straight to his face. And while we're on the subject, let me tell you. I'm not the richest guy on Jackass, but boy, am I trying to become the richest guy on Jackass. And I think I'm getting somewhere. You know why? Because my shipping business is really taking off. I actually just got my second warehouse for shipping all of our merch stuff. And man, you know what made me so successful in that business? Yeah, it's called ShipStation. That's how we make all of our orders go out super smooth, super easy, and even more importantly, super cheap. Because no matter how many different platforms you're selling your goods from, ShipStation takes all of those platforms and funnels them into one super easy to use interface, and it gets you the lowest possible rates on all the mail carriers, UPS, post office, all that. They're giving you rates that are normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies, and they're just hooking it up. Now, here's even crazier, and I can't believe they're doing this at this time of year, but for the listeners of my podcast, you get a free 60-day trial. Not even charge anything. You get to find out how great it is for nothing. If you go to ShipStation.com, and when you get there, you click the microphone at the top of the page, and then that's when you plug in the promo code Stevo, and that's going to unlock a 60-day free trial. Now, think about when this is going down. We're about we're about to hit the holidays over here. The next two months are the most active like e-commerce months of the year and they're giving you this deal right now. It's crazy. No matter if you're selling a little bit, if you're selling a lot, like ShipStation is your solution to getting somewhere with e-commerce, man. And in this day and age, if you're not selling stuff online, you're blowing it. So Let's start selling more stuff. I know I started selling more stuff. Now it's your turn. And do it well by going to ShipStation.com using the promo code Stevo. Again, you hit that little mic at the top of the page and then plug in the promo code Stevo. You're off and running for 60 days for free. No hassle shipping. Man, 
come on. It's time to make ship happen. So yeah, dude, get on over to shipstation.com and now let's talk about money. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got to ask my question then. What, what, what was the first thing you did with your first big paycheck? What would you buy? Steak and an appetizer. Just a steak and a, I mean, you didn't, you didn't well, here, say fuck it. Here, like, this, this, is, this is the, the it's, it's not um, a sexy answer, but I think this is, um, must be nice. Must be nice to be rich, right? Must be nice to have your own sprinter van. Yeah. Like, oh, if I, if I had, you know, the, all the haters and like, oh, if I had your money, I would do, you know, and I, and I go, I do the same shit when I was poor, you know, like, right. it's like, oh, you, dude. you've done, you get this, right? You're like, must be nice to be jackass four in a multi-million. And you're like, wait, like I was doing stunts when I had nothing with grocery carts. Right. Like, so it's a weird thing to say to someone like I hitchhiked all over the world before I had a dime. Mm -hmm. I begged for rides. I begged to stay at people's houses. I, I was a world traveler with no money. Right. Yeah. I've, paint i used to steal spray paint and just paint like food that i couldn't afford i would shoplift so like i'm not i'm not you know saying you should do this but i just i did whatever i wanted right. so when the money hit the bank account um not that it's not important it just was like whatever you know and right. then i did all the pitfalls i bought all the cars i bought all the shit and i was like i don't need any of this stuff like my life is very simple right like yeah and uh it, it's like I don't have that much stuff now. Like I'm trying to go more minimal and almost all my resources and time is to just like helping people and, and doing that. But, um, you know, the, the headlines is like richest artists in the world. And, and, and to be honest, like when I met Mark Zuckerberg and Sean Parker, I didn't believe in their company. <laughs> and you know, I've talked about all this stuff and I wasn't on social media and I probably still wouldn't be on. I mean, I'm on social, I have a social media presence, but it's not me like my social, you know, I know this is all douchey shit. My social media team does that, right. you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I was like Facebook, MySpace. I don't like what I have friends. Like I don't need this shit. It seems right. so stupid. So when Facebook started taking over MySpace, because you remember how mm -hmm. gigantic that was, I wasn't even paying attention. So like, like my whole life is gambling. So I have all these things that I would bet on and some of them paid off and some of them didn't. And that was one that was paying off, but I wasn't even paying attention to it because my art career was taking off. My paintings were selling for like more money than I, you know, but I wasn't like as well known and the gambling was taking off. I mean, I was started winning. I, I figured I, I, I kind of don't like talking about it because you don't want to encourage people to gamble. I don't. Yeah. Cause it's, it, um, people hit you up all the time about how to be like Steve-O or Jack, you know, all that kind of shit. And it's, and, and it's, this is what I would say. Cause, cause my teacher caught me, my art teacher caught me once giving advice after I caught up and he's like, you know, the adv advice you give is very dangerous because you're giving it to like normal people who aren't like you. Right. And I think you and I are, I know this sounds very like braggadocious, but I think we're really good at making it look like we're just having a good time and fucking around and making it look easy and just acting stupid and crazy. And it doesn't account for the years, the yeah. years of discipline and all the boring shit that we don't show, right? Like, right. like, oh, look at that guy, he's just throwing paint. I'm like, bro, do you know what I do after the camera's off? I just, right. and like, the clown school you went to, the stunt, yeah. like all this fucking practice. And then when the camera's on, you just do it and you're like, oh, the, he's just fucking around. So, it, you know, yeah, so people, it, it's, it's more fun. It's more fun for me when I read the headlines, even like it's when I go watch the uh, Social Network uh, movie by David Fincher. It's like, it's like, I liked that movie. It's fucking mm -hmm. awesome, but yeah, it's just not true most of every it. Time I, every <laughs> <laughs> I was there for all of it. I'm like, wow, that is like the most exaggerated, like intense, like Hollywood made up version and it was just not that, you know, yeah, sure, the, it happens, is, is right? Is there a documentary version of it that, that's actually accurate? I'm trying to think. Maybe the documentary version would be even more crazy. <laughs> Every time I think about Mark Zuckerberg, I think about the actor that played him in yeah. the movie. And, like, I, and I'm friends with Sean Parker, and then when I think about... <laughs> 
Hey, like Justin. Sean Parker is the Napster guy. Yeah. Right. Justin okay. Timberlake. Yeah, GT. and then we go, you know, a million dollars. You know what's cool? A billion dollars. Or yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, how yeah. about <laughs> just. Uh-huh. How about just Facebook? Not the Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I heard something like from a few different places just very recently that I just absolutely loved and I couldn't believe that I didn't, like, it didn't occur to me sooner. But the idea that that money mm-hmm. doesn't change people mm-hmm. it simply amplifies the way that they already are mm, interesting this is something that i first heard khabib the, the fighter mm-hmm. khabib Nurmagomedov. he said it about conor mcgregor you know like a lot of people want to give conor mcgregor a pass because he just came into like hundreds of millions of dollars right. and it's going to make you he said and khabib said no that's like whatever you are money makes you more of that yeah. and, and- what, what do you agree with that? I do, I do, and and I've since heard that in uh, in, in multiple other contexts of, of, that I can't, uh, you know. Well, I think that's true. Like in the in the short time that I've known you, like you have money and you're sending people to get help in Colombia. Like that's what you decide to do with your money, you know. And um, but then that that goes to the question of like, who are we? Are we like, are we evil? Are we villains? And um, are we good people? Are we the here? You know, it, it, I guess part of that is. Um, hmm. Let me tr- let me try. Out, like, like if I close my eyes, right, and I go, "Holy fuck! I never need to move again. I never need to move again." Right? Like, I'm Very talking about a contraption that, will, like, <laughs> I, I can hire enough people for the rest of my life where I, I just don't have to do anything. I didn't have to walk to this van. I could have had someone like carry me here. Like, <laughs> and Lecter. so if I think like that, then it's like, holy fuck, you know? Um, <laughs> then, and then like, you don't know this, sh- this life until you have it. Right. Mm-hmm. So people are like, oh man, you hang out with all these rich people. It's like, look, there's these isms, right? More money, more problems with, with, uh, money is power with great power comes great responsibility. Like these things are all true for a reason, you know? And I, I could be like, well, I didn't want this. I didn't want this responsibility. And you know, in that case, I kind of sound like Spider-Man. Like I didn't want this. It's like, <laughs> well, you have it now. Right. So you have a responsibility that you didn't want and now you got to do something with it. And so that's what I'm doing. That's, I, I don't really like talk about it that much. Um, like one of the things, uh, you know, five, seven years ago was when I was like the most out of my fucking mind, you know, and, and, um, part of getting better is, is service work. Right. And, yeah. and like, I'm like, I, I'm not fu- like, I don't fucking need to lift a finger. I'm not help, you know, like, Oh, you want me to help someone? Here's a check. And they're like, that's easy to write a check for you. Like you gotta do, you gotta like put your effort in action, you know? So, I'm like super into animals. I'm super into like dolphin therapy, horse therapy. And like the first time I did horse therapy, have you done it? Equine uh, therapy? Scott knows all about it. My, my, my sponsor is like the, the oh, guy for equine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. For equine therapy on the East Coast and West Coast. So. All right. So like the first time I did horse therapy, I, I don't know how to ride a horse. So I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to ride a horse. And they're like, oh, no, you don't even touch the horse. And I was like, what? What the <laughs> fuck? And they're like, um, horse therapy is like or the one I, the ones I did was like, how do you get ho- horse from a point A to point B without touching it? So then you see all the addicts go get, get over there or like trying to bribe him with the apple. And it's like, it's just like when you calm down, the, mm-hmm. the horse mirrors you. Right. So when you calm down, the horse calms down. So, and then it follows you. So I'm, I'm like, all right, cool. Like that's, not, I, I want to do something with that. So I was living in Arizona a few years ago and I volunteered at this ranch who does equine therapy with um at-risk youth uh like kids with um, autism and just special needs and addicts and i'm like dude i'm gonna become like this horse and they go um we don't need any we need tons of volunteers but we have enough of those people we need people to shovel shit and in my mind because you know i'm like dude i'm fucking dave cho like (laughs) you know how much like i'll fucking hire a team of people to shovel you know (laughs) That's my ego flaring up, right? I'm like, I'm not fucking shoveling yeah. shit. And then my sponsor at the time's like, bro, we're shoveling shit. That's what you're doing. And my ego is just like out of control. It's like I am 100% just 
how is this going to help me get better? And he's like, you don't know what you don't know until you try it, right? Mm -hmm. So I shoveled shit for almost a year. I went there every day complaining, like, you know, and I, and I went under there for, like, a, a different name because I didn't want anyone to, like, Google me and, you know. And I'm just, like, watching kids. And, like, in my mind, I'm like, I love fucking teaching kids. I love, like, helping people. Like, I want to do that shit over there. And they're like, yeah, so there's more manure here. And, you know, and, and you know, that kind of shit when you do, you smell like it all day, even if you shower, right? So I'm smelling like shit. But on, on, during during break time, like I'm doodling, like, and so one day the the lady that owns the whole ranch is like, um, "Hey Johnny, <laughs> the, 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 hey Johnny, I, I you you're like really good at drawing." And I was like, "Oh thanks," hmm. and and she goes, "You know we're having um, you know we're having a special event this weekend for like victims of abuse. Like, do you want to do you want to come and draw portraits of them?" And I was like, "Yeah sure." Like, and then once again the ego's like. <clears throat> motherfucker do you know do you know how much i charge for this yeah, shit you know like what you're getting right what now? do you think i'm a working at magic mountain like what am i a fucking clown <laughs> 15 dollars you know character and i and i go yes i'll yes i'll do that you know so i get there that weekend and it's like a special day and it's like all these services for like you know these people that have been abused it's like free hair free manicure like free clothes like all these people setting up and so i sit down with like my little easel and it was all sexually trafficked, you know, victims of like ex prostitutes, ex, you know. And, um, you know, I had been with, I don't know how many prostitutes in my life, you know, all over the world. And I just, I, I just froze up, had to take a shit, kind of just hid in the bathroom. And I was like, I should just go home. Mm. Like, I just felt, I just felt shame. I was just like, man, I've. I've been a part of this and this is not this, this I can't I can't heavy. Be, I can't be here you know and as I start to walk out the door uh the lady's like hey Johnny you know first the first woman you know she's ready and she's like so uncomfortable because she's like no one's ever I've only been looked at as like a sexual being I've just been used by men and I'm like oh fuck dude <clears throat> so I sit there and I start drawing her and I'm like, I gotta fucking like, I gotta make this like the best drawing I've ever done in my life. Um, so, so I'm like, and I'm a little rusty cause all I've been doing is shoveling shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like drawing her and I'm trying to make her as beautiful. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm, I'm like really seeing her. And then she starts crying. Cause she's like, N I've never had anyone draw my portrait and like, Jesus. Know? So she goes and she goes takes it to all the other women there and she's like this guy over there just drew that so then the line starts forming and i'm like holy fuck like this is crazy and there was like 50 women there that day and all of them have like the most heartbreaking you know the worst stories ever and you know i i the, the event started at noon or something and they're were, they were only gonna go till five and i stayed till midnight and I drew all of them and like everyone went home and I was still there and um, it just like broke me, you know, just like mm -hmm. destroyed me. And um, like, there's a part of my ego that's like, hey, guys, you know, I'm famous. You could sell this thing and, you know, but it was just it was so raw and so personal. And and I go, anyone could write a check, which I do that also. Right. And I tend to do that anonymously i don't like being hey the D dave cho part of this you know <laughs> I, I just do that but i'm like i'm i have a skill i can give back like i can help people so like i that's that's where i that's that's how i spend my time i stopped selling my art in 2009 mm. so that's all i do now i do murals i do anything where my art can be seen or received for free online murals posters whatever where i just give away or doing murals with kids or people that have been like you know that's that's my work and um when you did the drawings of all these 50 women you say it broke you mm. but the way that you told that story it was so beautiful it s seems to me that that would have been on some level healing oh i mean it it broke me and it and it healed me you know it's just like i i think i just like dr cried the entire drive home that day and then i just uh I just, yeah, just the whole thing of, 
addicts don't care about other people. Mm -hmm. Addicts don't give a shit about, um, and just to clarify anyone listening and it's not a competition, I'm not a drug addict. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, alcoholic. I'm a sex addict, a gambling addict, recovering, Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, food addict, alcohol, you know, workaholic, all the process addictions, you know, shopping, sex, food, love, all those things. And like the, the final ones that I'm struggling with are food and work. Tell me, about me it. too. Right. Like, I mean, when I met Steve-O, this is my first conversation. He comes into my house. <clears throat> I'm, you know, the Koreatown house and I'm, and I'm painting him for the show. And he's like, bro, I'm skyjacking. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I don't, I don't, I, he's like, he's like explaining to me, I don't ever watch porn again. I, yeah. I don't watch porn anymore. I'm like, tell me how you did it. And then in the next breath, he goes, so I'm watching porn as I'm jerking out, uh, off out. And I go, wait, what? He goes, yeah, I was trying to come right as I pulled the parachute. And, and, and I had to watch porn. I go, and it's what I say all the time. And it's, the, it's our like loophole. It's for work. But it was right. for work, right? Uh-huh. For guys like us that turned our hobbies into our careers, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to do the most fucked up shit that's not okay but it's for work, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it, le- le- legit, it is the only time I watched porn in in, in years. Amazing. And no judging, bro. Right, by the right, way, right, I'm right. just saying. And, like, and, and I'm also a drug addict, and I did the riding the bicycle thing with the general anesthesia drug. Yeah, you know, that's like taking drugs for work. That was even more scary. That's like but, David saying, like, okay, I'm gonna start painting prostitutes that I fuck while I fuck them. <laughs> well, I did that painting yeah. it, but but I did do that. Did you really? Yeah, there was so many things that I did in my addiction that I didn't want to do, but content. Oh, this is gonna be in my book later. Yeah, wow. Like this is right. gonna this is gonna story. be in the documentary. This is gonna be you know yeah. everything is gonna be a dope story for when I get to Wild Ride one day, you know, <laughs> yeah. with the blue lighting and the ba- <laughs> and so when I say addicts don't give a fuck, I mean they just want what they want. Mm-hmm. They don't think about like oh I'm gonna kill myself or I'm gonna overdose. They don't think about how that's gonna affect their family, their family's families, yeah. like all the people around them. It's just like this behavior is just like a tornado just ripping through, and so. I'm like, oh, I'm horny. I want to have sex right Selfish. now. I'm going to get a prostitute. She comes. She's like a supermodel that's doing this on the side. I'm like, oh, she's not like a sex traffic worker, you know. And there's no consideration of her trauma, of where she's from, how she ended. It's just like, I want what I want right now. And she's 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 selling her body and I'm willing to buy it. So we're adults and we're, you know, it's yeah. all good. So I don't see the problem there, you know. And that's just my life i was like everyone's an adult everyone's making their decisions good and bad and so um when i say that broke me that's what i'm talking about it yeah. just it just like i I, w- I went to i i was doing an s program too mm-hmm. and uh when i went through my inventory yeah my sponsor at the time owned a uh w- a woman's battered shelter mm. and so i i went there and like you know i put in hours you know to, yeah. for each Per, n- number on the list that I couldn't make amends to or whatever. Yeah. And I was there for a while and, uh, you know, finally got to know some of the girls and they were like, you know, what are you, what are you doing here? And they all crowded around and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm making amends for like, mm-hmm. I was an asshole to women and this mm-hmm. and that. That fucked me up because it's like, me, as I'm telling them why I'm there, there's like little girls around them and I'm just like looking at all these girls like, dude, mm-hmm. like, fuck. Yeah. It was heavy. But this is how change happens, right? Like, yeah. So... So, (laughs) so yeah, my final, my final area, my problem area is work and food. Like, and so I'm sitting at the doctor's office going in my entitlement issues. That's my character defect, right? I'm like, I'm rich. I should, I do all these good things for people and a lot of things that people don't know about. And I'm this good dude that's just like helping people. So. I should eat whatever the fuck I want. And if I want to get healthy, I should do the Michael Jackson shit and just like hyper, you know, the chamber and all, you know, and I sit there and I go, no, I'm not going to do this shit. Like it feels very addicty. I feels like if the stem cell thing goes well, that I'll keep coming back and I'll basically be living in Colombia and getting it shot up into every part of my body. And if there's the, you know, um, so, so I said no for now, I walked out of there. And then I went into sad guy victim mode of like, you know, I'm just like, just be the fat guy. People like you better when you're fatter. Like you're, you're, you know. I mean, you're giving yourself a pretty hard time. You're not, I, I, <laughs> you know. I wish, I, yeah, all right. So then I, so then I go on 
this is all happening around the same time. Then I go on Rich Roll, and then he, like I said, he didn't say shit. I shamed, I gave myself the hard time. I'm like, yeah. this motherfucker, because I'm reading just his first chapter, and he's like, couldn't walk up the steps, like, you know, I was like, in, you know, very similar, like, I'm in my 40s, and like, I have everything to live for, and yet I can't even... So I sit there and I go, fuck, man, I can't get my shit to like, I can't. And I know that there's Overeaters Anonymous. I know there's food programs I could get involved with. So I decided to get healthy for the best possible reason, a reality television show. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so I get hit up two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. I get hit up. Uh, now, let me see how for truth. FX? No, not for X FX. And I'm trying to figure out how most truthfully I could tell the story without getting anyone in trouble. I'll try, and I guess. Uh, let, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, because because so much of uh, of what you've been talking about, it really points to shame. Mm, you know? uh, absolutely, yeah. It, it, with with rich role, you're like I gave myself all this shame, and you know, like you, you know, seem to have a real knack for beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a saying like, if anybody else was like treated me the way I treat me, I'd mm. fucking kill that person. Mm, you know, like. Yeah. And and so my question is, do you think that that it's actually the the motivation or the addiction is to shame? Oh fuck yeah, bro! We like that shit. Right, because we, like with, with, with how did how did it feel being called crackhead by Conor McGregor? Yeah, that, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Steve O's loving this shit. I, loved it. I was like, <laughs> I was like, there's zero part of him that's offended by right, that. Right. I absolutely, absolutely loved it. But but, for, but my, my example for that is the, like with food. Yeah, I would find myself, uh, you know, after a meal. Yeah. As soon as I as soon as I swallowed my last bite, all right. of a sudden I want sugar so bad I'm turning into a werewolf and I just want it I want the dessert. And then I start negotiating with myself and mm -hmm. think I think, oh man, I want dessert, but I'm gonna feel bad if I eat the dessert. You know, right. like oh I should oh, yeah, I yeah. shouldn't I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it. And then like I just somehow arrive at like, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna fucking go for it. And then like the question becomes and this is a legitimate question, what was I actually choosing was i choosing to have the dessert or was i choosing to ha have uh the, the beat myself up the shame like is the, was that the reward right. that i was seeking the, like yeah there's if, some kind of fucking perverse pleasure or reward in in shame where that's actually why I right so people dessert. listening right now are like i'm addicted to alcohol i'm addicted to food i'm addicted you know whatever your addiction is or whoever you love in your life is addicted to something you're like that's the problem that magic spoon cereal yeah. that that that, <laughs> that heroin or whatever it's the trauma like the shame right yeah. you're addicted to the shame the it's the codependence shame. is the root of it it's just the alcohol ends up being the symptom the dysfunctional like self-medicating tool that you choose to deal with the trauma that's the hole inside that you can't fill with any of that right so that's a so that's it right and and that's why people who aren't addicts have such a hard time understanding they're like wait bro you won a million dollars at the blackjack table why are you still playing like any normal people person would walk yeah. up go have Not a enough. party but you want to sit there till you lose 10 million dollars and i'm like kind of feels better <laughs> and they're like wait i don't, I don't or, or like wait you had one drink and you're having you're you're you you got a good buzz going. You're having a good time. You want to keep drinking till you almost kill someone and like are puking and everyone's laughing at you. And you're like, yes, yeah. And so, yeah. Like, so so, in that way. And I'm I swear I'm not trying to do this to plug the TV show. I know that show is dope. If for anyone who hasn't seen the Cho show, I'm like that show's fucking dope, and I love it, and I'm so proud of. Like I don't have shame about. it. I have a lot of pride about it, and. It's just not doing as well as I, I thought. And so I go, why is that? And as soon as the show hit, two of the biggest celebrities on the planet, like I'm not gonna say their name, but like separately contacted me through my, my manager and-, and Brad and, Pitt, and, Scarlett Johansson. Is Brad Pitt the big, you know, Tom Cruise. That, that level, <laughs> that level. And they're like, it is insane what you're doing about awareness for addiction, mental health. Um, you know, just all this stuff and you're talking so, it's so brave and I'm, and the whole time in my head, I'm like, dude, please be on my show. Please be on my show. And, and they're just big upping me. They're just blowing smoke up. They're like, it's fucking, like, it, it, it resonated. And I go, you want to be on the show? And they're like, 
hell no. <laughs> I'm just calling you to let you know I'm glad you're doing it. I would never be on your show. <laughs> and I'm like, can you plug it at least? And they're like, hell no, because that means what? And it's shame again. Like, I have a friend who's a very close friend of mine, and he's like, I need to watch the Cho show like it's porn because every time my wife comes in, I close the laptop, and she's like, what are you watching? And he's like, I don't want to tell her because it's such a hard show to watch with the topics you talk about. Because if I watch it with my wife, we're going to have to have a talk about this stuff, and I don't yeah. want to have that talk. But on the flip side, like there was an episode where it was just all about jerking off and how I can't stop jerking off and how it's like in our society, it, we just turn into a joke, but it's a real problem. And, and another friend of mine watched it with his 16-year-old son, mm. and because he has the apps to monitor his 16-year-old his son who has a brand new cell phone, he's like, kids jerking off like crazy. Like it, it's After like he it, watched it. No, he just can he general, can see general, on his yeah. phone what he's looking up, and uh -huh. it's just and he's like, I have no idea, no tools on how to have this conversation yeah. with my son. So I'm like, let's watch this show together. They watched an episode, and then it's like, look, Steve will jerks off while jumping out of planes. Dave jerks off. Like it's it, it, it. He's like it provided a space where I can have that conversation with right. his son. But because of the the nature of so much of the things you talk about on that show are shameful. It's causing shame in me to even talk. Like the network called me, they're like, "Bro, you, not one of your guests has plugged the show on social media, and <laughs> why is that?" And I'm like, "I I don't know." Like, and and I and and you know, so then I start beating. I'm like, "Man, the show must suck," but I know it doesn't suck. I know it's awesome, and and it's like, well, maybe they don't they don't want to talk. <laughs> they don't want to promote the things that they talked about on there, and. You know, there was a, you know, a lot of episodes that got pulled because the guests mm. were like, I don't, I'm not cool with that being out there. Like, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. And so, um, so shame is a powerful drug and I, and I could definitely get high off of it. So, and it's a, you know, like I've had sponsors that have been very loving and kind and they're like, let's go through the steps, you know? And I'm like, you know, I kind of, I kind of like being yelled at. I kind of like the more sergeant, like, Hey, we're doing this or else, you know? because that ties into my trauma of like neglect and abandonment, you know, like, which is, um, you know, like, how do you measure? How do you measure neglect, you know? So, hmm. yes, I'm being, I, I think that's the, the missing component w with most people when they're like, I don't, cause they're, cause at the end of the day, they're using logic, right? You're, right. you're like, wait, does not compute A plus B equals C. Like why? It's like, you're using logic to talk about things that are not logical. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you trying to, uh, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't like, first of all, every fucking billionaire I know is sick. They're not, they're, they're, they're mentally not, a normal person stops at a million. <laughs> a normal person <laughs> goes, I made $200 million this year. That's enough. To right. make a billion dollars, there's some shit going on. Yeah. So when you go, when I would have, no, you would never get a billion dollars. Unless you were sick like that, you got to be fucked up to make a billion dollars. Well, you know, like I, I saw that sure. there was like a survey of of uh, people who like about financial security. Yeah. And the more money people have, the less financially secure they feel. Like it was like reported that people mm. with over ten million dollars of net worth felt like way more anxious about financial insecurity than like people. That were, like with like whatever like, i just i i i re, I, I don't want to say everything i said on the ritual podcast but I, talking about it there reminded me of something while i was walking to here is um in 1994 uh a band called corn put out a song called F spelled f-a-g-e-t and it wasn't about like calling people F it was jonathan davis the singer of that band that's what people were calling him and i was 15 at the time when that song came out and um, I, I remember the songs. It was it was that song, and there's another song on Corn's uh, self. It was their first album was called Corn. Uh, Daddy. It was like a 14 minute song at the end where he's just crying, and I just never heard anything like that. Mm. And um, in the trifecta of grunge music, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden being the the third stepchild, there's a song called Slaves and Bulldozers where Chris Cornell hits every octave. It's like, now I know why you've been shaking. And it's like, all, like in hindsight now, looking back at like all my heroes, 
like every single musician athlete that I look up to has been sexually molested. All my favorite singers are sexually molested. All my favorite athletes are sexually molested. And, but I didn't know that at 15 and at 15 was right when I was getting into graffiti and that movie pump up the volume just came out mm -hmm. with uh, Christian Slater. And mm -hmm. that's the first time I heard the word cock ring. <laughs> so I went to, um, right here where Trejo's tacos or Trejo's donuts is on uh, Santa Monica it was a sex shop. Mm -hmm. And that's where I shoplifted my first cock ring. And, uh, sorry, I'm all over the place. My dad, the only sex talk he ever had with me. This is the only thing like in that. And I went to jail for shoplifting and graffiti when I was 15 also is when he was driving me to do, um, juvenile alter alternative work service, cleaning shit up on the freeway. He was like, he found my porn stash. You know, it was a telephone. Were, were you holding it for someone else? That's what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> dude, did you ever say that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's like the first, you know. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's not, no, it's not mine. It's yeah, just mine. yeah. I Every time it I was John it Lee's. That's what yeah, I said. I, I remember. I was like, it's John Lee's and Eddie's. <laughs> like the, the like. I, I didn't even come up with the name of who's. I'm just not. I'm holding it for my friend. <laughs> well, no, so funny. Funny. My, 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 which friend? Uh, I don't know. My brother was working at Big Brother, so all the hustlers were stashed in my oh, closet. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, Are oh, you actually were holding? <laughs> I was holding it. No, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're just piled in my room. I had like 500 because he worked at Hustler. Yeah. And so I had this porn stash, which was a telephone book. Cause that's, and then in like, I glued on the inside of each telephone book with a glue stick, like a page out of Victoria's secret or something I saw in some, ma it wasn't like, I didn't have access to like big brother and that stuff mm -hmm. yet. But later on, I got some good stories for that. And then I would put that telephone book with another normal telephone book and I would like hide it, like I hid it well, but because I just got arrested, part of the probation officer was like, go through their room, like see if they have drugs, weapons. So he found it. And so while he was driving me back from like picking trash off the freeway, he's like, you know, you know, me and your mother, we're Christian, so we can't have stuff like this in the house. And, um, I was like, oh, that's that's John Lee's. He came over and like, and he's like, yeah, well, whosoever it is, it's it's gone. And he and then he like pauses for a second and says, you know, I was young, too, you know, and it's just normal to have boners. And I'm like, oh, God, please. <laughs> and he goes, you know, I'll tell you what my teacher told me when I when I was hitting puberty in Korea. He's like, take a cold shower because a boner is blood a lot of blood to your penis and i'm just like fuck dude stop talking to me and he goes and just run your boner away just go outside and just run and then that blood will redistribute as you're running and so that was the first and only talk i've ever had with my dad about sex and you know within the you know i never stopped crying by the way because of like i was you know until i was like 27 so i go and i shoplift this cock ring and basically this was my like I, I'm realizing it now as I'm saying it out loud, it was a ritual. I'd steal spray paint because I couldn't afford it. I'd get like, I get like as jacked up as I can, you know, like that that boner you have when you're a teenager when you can like hammer nails with it. And then I put a cock ring around it so I could just be hard the whole time, like literally. And then I would start punching my face while listening to like screaming at myself, "You're a." F and like blood would be like dripping on my shirt and on my dick and um, listening to Slaves and Bulldozers, um, Soundgarden, like corn. And I would just almost, I guess I was getting high. I was putting myself into like a shame, like you're a piece of shit, you're nothing. And no one can touch you. No one can do anything to you because now you've just hyped yourself up by listening to new metal. You've hyped yourself up by like, like literally getting the blood going out of your face. You're literally hard down here. And then I would just go out. And in the same way, Steve-O is a very typical Korean name. David Cho is the same thing as being named John Smith. And I would go out and tag David Cho. Like I didn't have a cool gang. I didn't, and I would just write my name all over the city. I'd draw this like stupid whale and I would just be so happy. <laughs> I was like, I am breaking the law. I'm vandalizing. I'm stealing the tools to vandalize with. No one can beat me up because I just beat myself up. No one can call me anything because I just called myself that. And it was the happiest I ever was because I had nothing. I didn't have a dime to my name. I didn't have anything. And so when you, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place. But when you say 
people get less financially or like yeah. secure yeah. as they get more money. That did happen to me because it's like even doing a show like on TV is, wait a second. You want to hear something that fucked me yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, this saying, um, a poor man mm -hmm. only has to worry about his next meal, but a rich man has to worry about his last meal. Mm, interesting. That yeah. Fucked up, dude. Yeah, that's super that's fucked, fucked up. up. If your next meal is all covered, and yeah. Then, and, it's, and then we're like, hey, dude, you get dark when you when you're. Yeah. It's not being in the present. You know? Yes, of course, it's future mm. tripping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and yeah, so it's like fuck, man. When I don't have anything, I just do whatever I want. I fucking hitchhike. I do this and that, and then wait. The financial security and freedom that should be coming from being filthy fucking rich is now i'm like a stressed induced shit like right and, and like i love fx like fx is fucking awesome they've created some of the best tv shows i've ever watched the shield sons of anarchy all that stuff but in the same way there's rules they to being on tv bad too huh yeah oh no that's amc all right okay, okay. but like that this sunny in philadelphia this is dope steve-o calls me i come we fucking shoot the shit in the car and it's like and then you put it out, you know, like when you do TV, there's rules, there's regulations, right. and it feels weird to be like, I'm fucking rich. I can make machines that work me out while I'm sleeping. I can do, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and now there's someone telling me, oh, you got to cut this scene or you can't do this. And it's like, I'm not used to hearing people say, say no to me. So it's like, mm -hmm. and, and then it's like, well, if I say the wrong thing and I get canceled and I get da da da, mm -hmm. the people will take things from me and that's all like perception. Like, I I, and and that's that's kind of like the life I live, which is stress free. I, for the most part, you know, I don't do podcasts. I just chill. I like I paint with kids. Like I spend time. I, I, you know, you know, I do all this stuff and I don't like talking about it because I don't want to be that guy. And my therapist said, you know, you should kind of check yourself on that because you get kind of even like telling that story like you get so hyped up when you're like hey i used to fucking beat myself up and steal and do all this shit and then like when you're like oh like you're almost ashamed about the good work you do like you don't want to talk about it because then you're that guy that's like hey I, you know so anyways you're correct i get high off shame i'm working on it and um and, and so i'm sitting there two and a half weeks ago and i'm like i'm not gonna get lose all this weight with this machine that's that that I'm not gonna pay for, not with the stem, so you know, still open I guess, but you know I'm not, I didn't do that dive yet, the Jeff Bezos anti aging pay for all this shit dive, and kind of just settling into I'm a fucking fat guy, and then I get hit up. All right, I won't say the, I guess I could talk about it without saying. So it's a reality show in the vein of, and I love these shows, competitive like survival shows like Survivor, mm -hmm. Naked and Afraid. Uh, amazing race like i love those shows like that's my that's i love that so i just never thought i'd get hit up to be on one of those shows and they're like and it's filming in two weeks and i'm like wait a second wait a second <laughs> what the fuck dude like who 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 dropped out and they're, and they're like click they're like <laughs> got covid and i'm like oh okay so so i i'm like i i know i'm not like an a-list dude like so i'm like the literally the last guy and i'm like if you're calling me that means you probably called Steve-O and I everyone. Might have gotten a yeah, call. You, I'm like, <laughs> and the know. guy's like, I'm not trying to be like used car salesman, but the offer is out to ten people. So whoever gets back first is, and in my mind, I'm like, I, but then again, I think the the one I got called about, we we could talk about it after. Yeah, I'll, I'll, after, but uh, I, I think I'm, it would have already happened for some reason. I'm, but I'm betting it's probably, probably the same. We'll, we'll see, but. It's a show to test like your limits, and, and there's a charitable component. There's to a it. charitable component to it, and so and it's for network TV. It's network TV, so I'm like, yeah. it can't go, get more populous than that, right? FX is it's a major I wonder, network. I wonder with the landscape of fucking streaming and everything, this is so you funny. know, like if, if if networks are even dead, you know. But so everyone that I know, and this gets into some douchey talk, but all the showbiz people I know are like networks are dead. They're not yeah. dead, but they're on their way they out. They certainly mm -hmm. are. They're they trying to, to compete. They're in with, hospice. Well, this is how I know. Of course, was commercials. The last time I saw Steve-O out in public in the wild was at the Conor McGregor fight. Right. And for me, I haven't been out forever. 
And so, you know, and it's like, um, here's like a, it's such a strange, like microcosm of like how the universe and, and social behavior, but we go to the fight and here's like the VIP section for the super VIPs and the kind of VIPs and billionaire row. Right. Row. Yeah. And it's like, and you know, I rolled in with Sia who I, you know, I think is the, Dude, she's, amazing. she's the best. So, so you see all these celebrities that you've seen on TV and you're all sitting next to each other. And like, so you feel like everyone kind of feels, but it's like first day of like kindergartner, like, yeah, it's like, right. do I just, Hey, you all know each other, but you, but don't, you know don't, you other. don't know each other at all. And I, I mean, I'm with a group of people our age and like younger kids. So, um, <laughs> I think Mel Gibson was sitting next to you. Right. Really? He, 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 he was a, a row or two uh, in front. So, and I'm sitting, wow. and I'm sitting adjacent, right? And the kids that I'm sitting with, they're like in their 20s, and they're like, "Who is that?" Like people are like, <laughs> some people are booing him, some people are waving him, because we, we were there early, right? Like, right. And um, I was super psyched to see you. Oh, that was psyched to see you too. Yeah, yeah. And I was doing a selfie a video, like, "Hey, I'm at the fight," and then like because I'm with some famous people, I see Mel Gibson, like, you know, scanning my area. And like, right when he made eye contact with me, I flicked him off. <laughs> and but but I was filming it like I have a video of it. Oh, yeah. And he like, saw so, it. So and he it saw deliberate? it. And I'm like, felt horrible immediately <laughs> after because I'm like, I'm like, fuck that racist, you know, like, and I, I don't know the guy, right? Yeah, like, I, I, he might be like an awesome guy. But just in my mind, I got caught up with like, fuck Mel Gibson. And I and I was filming myself and I did this. And it was right when we made eye contact. <laughs> and I could see actually, he was a little bummed out. And maybe I'm making that up. But I, I saw in his eyes, a, like a miniature death, like, like oh wow! I, I had a I had a weird encounter with him that night. Oh, you did? I mean, I'm not he even sure Steve what it off. was. I'm not even sure what it was, but uh, but I acknowledged him in some way, and I felt like ooh, like he wasn't stoked about it, you know? Oh, I don't know. Like I can't say for sure, but it felt like kind of crappy. Hmm. Yeah. He just wasn't happy to meet you or something. Yeah, there's some. Like, uh, you're like, right. hey, what's up, dude? Big fan. He's like, ah, oh, cool. Yeah. No, Steve-O is like the best at because everyone loves him. Yeah. And he, you could tell like you you love fighting more than anybody. And, and I, like I, I do enjoy watching. The and fights, I and man. the thing is I do too, but I feel shame about it because I'm like <laughs> why? Because yeah, I'm like because that fight get hurt. Because that fight. Yeah, I we talked about this. The dude that got pummeled, right? The, he just I forgot. I should know his name. Oh, you mean the oh that was Sugar Sean O'Malley fought? Oh, yeah, the guy that, that, that just the like hammer. Portugal guy, right? And to see it on TV is one thing. To be sitting there and he hearing you the feel bloody like it's in the Coliseum. and the guy won't go down and everyone's on their feet screaming. By the way, if you ever got into fighting, I'm like not to say that you were that guy. You have your superpower is you're able to disassociate to feel no pain. Yeah, you you, know, you would be you would be a great great fighter. <laughs> Yeah, you laughed so, when Omaga fucking yeah, knocked you unconscious. It's, it's like when I saw Dana White, it would be great to put on a fight between me and Justin Bieber because Justin Bieber can throw a punch and I can take a punch. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel immediately horrible. I send the video to my guy who uploads all my social media. I'm like, hey, throw this video of me like flicking off Mel Gibson. He's like, is that really in line with like your like who you are today? And I go, don't don't put it up. Ten seconds later. Trump walks into the building and I do it again. <laughs> he sits there, he's walking through his entourage and I hang over and I go, like I wanted to get it like right in his face. And then I go, also don't know the guy, right? Like I, I hear of what he's done, but like, I yeah. don't know that guy. And I go, I mean, we know enough about Trump to, but I felt bad. I'm like, that's, that's the answer to flick. Like, so anyways, the point is we're at these fights. The kids, they don't know who Jared Leto is. They don't know who the fuck Mel Gibson is. Yeah. Then the Nelk boys come in. Everybody's going nuts. Everyone's going nuts. And I'm like, I have no fucking idea who this nuts. guy is. Logan Paul comes in with his brother. They go nuts. It's like, that's who the celebrities are. Mm -hmm. Like, Brad Pitt is not A-list anymore. Right. Right? You, uh, you said something pretty interesting to me when uh, we had dinner recently. You were saying that... Uh, you know, you've got this motivation to be remembered forever, and like, you know, like, dude, it's not gonna happen, dude. Like, you're, <laughs> like, you're not even gonna get, like, a hundred years from now, like, it, it's not gonna. It's like getting in a car and getting in an Uber, and then like, smells like Teen Spirit comes on, and the 25 year old kid driving the car is like, oh, what is this? And I go, you don't know fucking Nirvana? 
And I go, oh yeah, that's classic rock now. Jay Z yeah. is old people music. Mm. Like yeah. people that live yeah. their life for legacy, it's like, bro, it's a rap. It's a rap, <laughs> dude. It's a yeah. fucking rap. Like no one is gonna give a fuck about you. And like, there's so much shit. There's so like, right. And 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 that's what people want. They want authenticity. They want these things. And so for my ego, I go, oh, okay. Here's the usual suspects that are gonna be on this survival show. Washed up actors, a fat guy, a black guy, a crazy woman. Like they got the whole thing. And I'm like, so I'm, I'm sure I'm being be cast as the crazy guy. And because the guy was desperate and then they're like trying to find the last guy, he told me who the other guests were and all this other shit that he wasn't supposed to. And, and so in my mind, I go, oh, he thinks I weigh 205 right now. He thinks I'm like out of shape. I'm going to get fucking jacked. I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to come in prepared. I'm going to have fucking research on every single one of these guests. I'm going to have a sketchbook. I'm going to, it's, uh, I'm going to have like drawings of them so I can like manipulate them. And then on the show, I'm going to play the most empathetic, caring, basically me, like who I am. But then when they do the camera self confessional, I'm going to be like the heel, the evil guy. And I'm writing all this shit <laughs> and, and, and guys in my recovery group and my therapists are like, you're in your addiction right now of, of being an attention whore of like your ego, like, and, and I go, no, no, I'm not. Cause this show is about charity and about help. And it's about being, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's trying to be a feel good show. Right? Yeah. right. So I go in all the ways that I feel like my show failed, like it didn't become like this big thing. This is a major network. It's populist. If they dumb down my message to like 30%, 40% of what I say, even that's enough, you know? And, and so I just, in a very unhealthy way, start working out four hours a day. I lost 15 pounds in two weeks. Um, and, and yeah, I'm doing all that shit. I'm doing the cryotherapy, the UV and all this stuff. And um, it's just like, dude, I, I gotta do it. It's like, it's some of that Messiah martyr complex. Like I gotta yeah. go on this show. I gotta make it my show. So you are gonna do it? I said no. I said no. <laughs> and, and, and about that I feel mostly relief um and a tiny bit of sadness and regret you know huh um, you wanted to be the heel for a charity show <laughs> yeah <laughs> you didn't hear the shame part i love it like i it's yeah. like there's something very satisfying about people calling you a crackhead people like yeah. people hating you like yeah and, and you know that right yeah you go do something and like people are like and i'm sitting here talking shit about my own show the people who watch it love it. Dude, the, they fucking the Paul, feedback Paul I, got. I fucking loved it. But it's like that But same... I focus on the one thing that they don't like and then sure, that's course, where my attention is because that feels more well, it's yeah. like the comment section yeah. of YouTube, you know? Sure. Yeah. Right. But right. the shame addiction is like freeing almost the way you're explaining. It's like everyone's fear is like that people will hate you. Yeah. That you'll be this enemy. So like you you do it or like now you're free, you know? Yeah. Like now that worst thing that can happen to you. And like I watched your show in a in a room full of people. Super uncomfortable. Why are you sitting back there? Why am I back here? Yeah, I don't know. This is just where my seat is. But are, is that is that? Are you? This, I'm ashamed of myself. I put myself <laughs> over here. No, I've watched the show so many times. I've like, do you ever sit up up here? Yeah, I'm like for zooms. I'm sometimes here. Oh, okay, and, but I'm never I'm never back there. You're but so, you're so handsome. No, thanks, see dude. You Thank you. Yeah. But um, oh, but we you. watched your show in like a group of people. Super uncomfortable. But then we're like, oh, we got to watch another one. Like mm. the we felt. Yeah, discomfort watching it, but mm -hmm. there's also something really freeing mm -hmm. and like relieving about like okay, like the fear is like what if I have to sit next to someone and feel uncomfortable and like sit next mm -hmm. to my girlfriend while we watch this like thing about jacking off, but like now we did it and like I you feel better, you know? It's kind of like puts you through your worst fear and maybe that's part of the shame addiction. It's like you're free after that because yeah. the fear is shame, you know? Yeah. yeah, and 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 like one of the episodes that got pulled like I like I feel like you and me like are very similar like we're very comfortable um like being a victim or being like like at like I'm or I'll just speak for myself I'm very comfortable when people hate me like I'm right. like okay cool now I'm in my comfort zone I don't, I don't know that I, I can say you're that. not that way I didn't yeah not that, like that, I, uh -huh. I totally don't want people to hate me <laughs> <laughs> but like 
but like just like the Conor McGregor thing, like when he yeah. called you a crockhead on Twitter, like right, that was silly. That, that, uh, yeah, I, I can. I that's, he liked the attention, yeah, sure. of course. Right? Yeah. And, and that and that's what I mean. When people hate me, they usually hate like when I'm paying attention. They're like, and you were f on episode four, you did this, and th and I'm like. You hate me so much, yet you watched everything I do. <laughs> yeah. You pay attention to my yeah. career. So it's like, I know you're a fan and you're just trying to get attention in your way. And me getting the shame of you humiliating me or writing hurtful things is also attention for me, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, yeah, I, I that's the thing that I, the show has been unbelievably received by the people who watched it and loved it. And I can sit, and I'm sitting here focusing on like, Oh well, this guy didn't retweet it or post it, and like yeah, just uh, dude, like, he said none of your guests post about it on social media, and I was like, fuck. But that, like, I, it's not that I, I didn't want to promote your show. I just never promote anything. Like, like I don't even promote my my fucking dude, shit. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I, I just don't. I go on a show. I never promote it, no matter what it is. Pretty much. I I I was not calling you out in any no, way. I, mean, I didn't like, think you were. I didn't think that you were. Um, but uh, but um, now promote my shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but now we, we we certainly got the the you know the chance to s s yeah. promote it. It's a really this. cool show. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Honestly, it's yeah, dope. dude. But that th there is shame in in uh, how to like to do a show like that, and like I can be proud, like I am proud of the show I put out, and then to have so many people like pat me on the back and give me the attaboys and be like bro like it's it's such a brave thing and like all that that gives me shame right. that get the that good the, the good part is like ah oh, fuck dude i'm not used to like i'm right. used to doing something and then being polarizing and half the people hate and this and that and uh yeah like even yeah that was I, i'm just thinking of how we ended up having dinner at sia's house because i i went to the fights with sia yeah and we saw we're you. We're gonna go to, to um, see this thing on Sunday. Oh, you're going on yeah, Sunday? Yeah, we're gonna come. All right, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get to your place where I can just enjoy it, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm in this place where my life is about helping people, and I, and in a way, it, it always has, and yet I just enjoy someone's like. I like it when the legs break. I hear when the oh, when you someone the fights. I I enjoy like it's not a fight without the knockout and something being dis like. Hey, dude, why don't we watch the fights together? Oh my god! <laughs> because I feel like, that's what I'm telling you. Like I feel like I it's like eating like a cake that you shouldn't eat when you're diabetic or something. But people are like, dude, chill the fuck out and just watch. Did I tell you about when I met Neil Donald Walsh, the conversations with God author, and I told him I'm coming from, yeah. like, I'm, I'm here to hear yes. you speak about spirituality, and I'm going to a UFC event. Like, yeah. what's wrong with me? And right. like, is that wrong? And he said, I wouldn't choose to go to a UFC fight, but, but like, I, I encourage you to enjoy yourself. Right, that's what he said. Are you encouraging me to enjoy myself? Yeah. yeah. If I went to see a fight with you, I would 100% enjoy myself and all this shame guilt would go away. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to the fights this week. Oh, you're going to watch it? Yeah, just watching on TV. Oh, fuck. I'll go watch it with you. Cool, man. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. And, and we don't need to, to drag this on any longer. I think we, we've, we've done a, a, a wonderful Dude, job of, of you opening. You shit our... once. I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling shame right now. Why? Why? I, I, I've realized I used to have a podcast called DVDASA and. I'd go for four to six hours. Oh yeah. And um, oh, dude, this is longer than this. Oh really? Be, oh, this yeah, was a long never, one for us. Yeah. Even, oh shit! I wish usually an hour. hour we. You know, I, I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I watch mostly the clips. Oh, do you all <laughs> so, good? So, hey. dude, all so all I didn't good. know how long they they go. Dude, like, uh, but the mark is generally one hour. Sometimes oh okay. It's shorter. It's okay, same, shit. But, but yeah, is, give or take. So this, this I don't perfect. podcast that much. But when I used to, it was four to six hours. So when I go on Rich Roll or I go on Bobby Lee's, and they go, all right, I. Even though you're telling me that most podcasts are an hour, my mind goes immediately to I'm not being interesting enough. They're no, cutting no. me off. No, <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I, yeah, uh, I, I just nah, this, this is, is awesome. this is a hundred percent way longer than all right. usual. All right, okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. And dude, you've you're been like, fantastic. I didn't even get dude. into my Steve-O stories, but all right, dude, I'll been come back again, dude. dude you've, been, you've been fantastic. Can we do a part and, uh, two. I would and, love and to. And I just think that you know, and I, I, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I'm meaner to me than than anybody else. But, uh, like, the, just fucking give yourself a break over here. Can I do a Steve-O impression? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, dude, that fucking Steve, I'm fucking so mean to myself. <laughs> I fucking shop Goodfellas clothes at Target. I fucking eat all this magic spoon. I do cocaine with Mike Tyson. I fucking embarrass the Wu Tang clan. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my show, Wild Ride. I don't promote shit. <laughs> I care about the climate. I care about dogs. I care about. The stimulus package and COVID, but I don't give a fuck about myself. I stick shark food in my ass and I swim with sharks. I fucking jack off while I jump out of airplanes and I light myself on fire. Come check me out on tour. Steve-O, Wild Ride, listen to the podcast. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude. I love it. Yeah, yeah. We gotta cut that clip. Yeah, that, was yeah. clip. that was great. Yeah, dude. I, I, I love it, man. Fuck <laughs> yeah. thank, it. Thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, dude. Doing that podcast with us legitimately stressed David Cho out. Man, that, I'm not happy that that's the case, but I am super honored that he did it, you know? Like, what, what, a, what a bro. I've actually been seeing him more regularly and uh, just considering him a friend, which is um, crazy, you know? Like, I've got rich friends. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. And um, yeah, dude, life is good, man. Super stoked. I finished that book I told you about. It's so fucking good. But yeah, man, hustling, man. 